Look what I did broke. So ima imagine if I had the level of support that EXP is giving me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we were talking about Michael Valdez. Michael Valdez. Michael Valdez. Michael Valdez. Michael Valdez. So let's start Michael thinking about Valdez. it. Michael. Hello, and welcome to the Michael Valdez Global Podcast. Today's guest, oh my God, you guys, buckle up, man. This guy's energy is second to none. It is amazing. It's somebody that I've met recently, but somebody I'm already calling my little brother. This is some entrepreneur like crazy, guys. He is a designer. He's going to be a celebrity that you guys will all get to know very soon. Little tease. Rico Leon, how are you, my brother? Welcome to the show. Hey, I'm so excited. I, I can't stop staring at your beautiful, beautiful teeth, my man. I can't, I just, I really can't look away. I don't even know how I'm going to do this interview with those bright teeth you got going on over there. But thank you for the, the beautiful introduction. Yeah, designer, contractor, realtor, and uh, a man of many trades for sure. You are incredibly a man of many trades. And, you know, we're going to break it all down, but I know that you've got a lot of connections to real estate. And part of that actually came because you had a really personal sort of interaction that happened with your parents. They had some crooked contractors. You were like, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make sure that we get this right for everyone that comes after my parents. Tell me yeah. how your whole interest in real estate got started. Well, I was, uh, I, I've always been insanely good when it came to marketing, but I was in like an emergency race, restoration and construction. So, you know, a lot of realtors, they didn't see me as like a, a competitor because I was just yeah. like doing a trade different from them. But what I would do was I would consult and help their marketing pro bono. And then they would send their clients to me to do custom built homes. Like it was like, I got you. I'm going to help you out, like get from here to here. And that benefits me because then they send me houses. But what I didn't realize is I'm like doing the math and I'm like making them millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh -huh. Like I was just doing math. I just like, I was just like, wait a minute. I sent you a deal that made you like $65,000 in one transaction in 30 days. And I made like $25,000 after eight months of building a house. I was like, I, not, not, this doesn't make sense anymore. So that was the main re reason I got into the real estate side, but uh, the construction and just the connections, that's how I got the show. Um, yeah, a long time ago, my parents got taken advantage of from a bad contractor. And I don't necessarily know if that's the main reason that I'm such an advocate for people and yeah. homeowners alike. But um, yeah, the show just it came out of nowhere. They actually wanted to do a real estate show. And then they switched it and did something with me instead uh, on, the, on the rescue side. So uh, it is pretty exciting. All right, we just alluded to it. I was going to do it later, but let's just jump in because it's going to come right back and forth. So for sure. give the big reveal. You are about to premiere a show on HGTV, Rico to the Rescue, yes. in yes. just next month, which is going to be amazing. By the way, here, very selfishly, I love the fact this is amazing. You are the only Latino host on the entire channel I am so yeah. proud of you, brother, for everything you represent for our community. This is amazing. Tell me about the show. Yeah, so uh, I did not know that I was the first ever Latino host on HGTV until that article came out. And I was just like, I felt like, I was like, this has got to be wrong. Like, there's got to be yeah. some, some, you know, some spicy Hispanics out there with great personalities doing something. And then I realized, like, there wasn't any. And I was like, this is so crazy. but. It's, it's as much as it is like a, a, a beautiful thing. It's also, it's not pressure. It's just that I have to make sure that we're represented very well. And, you know, again, I'm not really too worried about it. I'm a boy scout. So it's like, that'll be easy, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a show called Rico to the rescue. It's when homeowners get taken advantage of by, you know, crooked contractors or maybe not bad contractors, but just contractors that don't know what they're doing or made some mistakes. Like, that happens to everyone, including myself when I first started. So I super understand. But in the show, I kind of like delegate and try to help mend things between the contractor and the homeowner. And in the show, it's not just like, like drama and this and this. It has everything. But in the show, we actually do uh, help homeowners with the actual language used of uh, the back and forth with contractors. I mean, we, we have interviews with the lawyer. Like we get into depth. So there's actual solutions on what to do uh, when that happens. because we are all one degree away from someone that got 
screwed over by a contractor. So it's something that like literally everyone can relate. But uh, yeah, it's very exciting. It's coming out January 7th. Uh, now I'm part of the Saturday night lineup of HGTV, which is a, a huge privilege as well. Uh, the show was supposed to be, I'm pretty sure, like in March, February, March. But, you know, they loved it so much. They, they pushed it to prime time. So I'm just like, you know, fingers it crossed. Awesome, hope, hope, hope in the world loves it, you know. You know what I think is so interesting? A lot of the different shows that are on HGTV has like a really singular focus, right? Somebody does one thing on one thing only in their lane. You, however, have your hands in everything because you're a serial entrepreneur, right? You own like 37 companies. It's crazy when yeah. you sleep. But you have a different perspective because you can see it from the roofer. You can see it from the flooring side. You can see it from the framers. You actually have the expertise in these different things, which I think is fascinating. It's a different lens because it's an all-inclusive lens. Yeah, there's two different two different routes. Uh, I was referring hundreds of millions, hundreds of hundreds of millions in construction, development, real estate, roofing, painless debt repair, like you name it. I was giving yeah. lots of love in one direction, but that was the thing. It was only one direction. So when it was, when it was time to pay the piper, they're like, oh, Rico's fine. He, you know, he's doing well. We don't have to you know, pay him $600,000 for this deal. That's when I got angry and I was like, well, okay, I'm going to start like my first company blew up. So I'm going to use the money from this company and start companies in every realm that I was already referring tens of millions to. So I, I did it I, almost out of anger. Uh, yeah. for sure. Um, but I mean, it, it's, it's, it's working out. I have great business partners. I'm, it's, I'm very blessed, but the other route was I was also screwed out of millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of dollars in construction. Like I've had contractors that I gave 150,000 to, they took the money, they worked on their own projects or they're building a house in Mexico with my money. I find out at the end and guess what? So I don't get sued. I had to pay the subcontractors again, again, directly, losing $70,000 right off the bat on one job. So this guy put me through the ringer. I mean, that's where all the gray hair came from in the last two years. <laughs> but, you know, but because of that, I just learned so many lessons. And uh, instead of just like crying about it, I just created solutions, kept my head above water. And like now, now we're here. So. But you know what? Look, that is a great lesson. You made millions out of the fact that people were like millions out of anger. I love that. Yeah. And then now you actually turned all of this truly into positive sort of things, right? And so mm -hmm. now, how many companies do you have? I was exaggerating, but you have a lot of companies. Um, as, as of right now, I believe I have like eight or nine. Because uh, I love know, I think you'll have to count them. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you know, there's, there's ones that I built. And then my business partner takes it and runs. And then there's ones yeah. that I'm more heavily involved in. Uh, like the, the biggest one is the, my production company. Since I was working with HGTV and made so many connections uh, with producers and showrunners and, and, and uh, like line producer, field producer, and all these people that are hyper connected, I started my own uh, production company. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, to do TV shows and all that kind of stuff, like, sure. But I yeah. wanted to use a production company, my very very expensive high-end 6k cameras that they use for movies i'm going to turn it around and give it back to the agents so like again any you know all all agents that like for, you know come to exp or part of my team i'm going to give them literally the highest level production to like help their social medias help them build their authority which you know even even now i would love to have an interview in person with the 6k cameras all that kind of stuff you know and I, I do a follow I, up interview. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I want, I want to, I want to give, I want to take EXP to the next level of production. Uh, you know, when you watch certain videos, the high level audio, the the production value, your eyes stay on longer. And imagine if you have an agency where this is the content that you're putting out versus, you know, what you got to do day one, iPhone 14 and and a gimbal. Yeah. But eventually, you want to get to that level, have a higher outreach, which makes you a stronger agent. You know what I love about you? I got to tell you something. Look, so you just see opportunities wherever you turn, right? So somebody screws you out of a, a, of a contracting job, you start your own contracting company. You've right. just gotten your first television show. Let's just start a production company. Where oh, does yeah. that come from? Where does that passion come from? 
you know what i when i first you know no offense to colorado but when i first came to colorado i honestly truly thought i was a, a, an adult amongst children i was like these people take so much time off like you know coming from east coast pittsburgh it's like yeah. work 80 hours a day then die like there it's hardcore yeah. over there and i came out here and i'm just like like i meet these people and i'm like this guy's successful this woman's and they're taking a million days off and they're barely putting value add uh they don't even have that good of a reputation i'm like there's no way and same thing with like tv there's there's people that are phenomenal and there's people that lack a lot of things in the industry and i'm over here thinking i'm i'm better with money i'm better with this i know how to take care of people better i could get the equipment myself it's just it all comes to me it's like and i and i i'll throw it and see what sticks and yeah. with the level of the production company it honestly only works because i have amazing people the people that i met through the show that helped me grow is uh unbelievable i wouldn't be able to have a production company without a director of photography who's done 15 years of cinematic you know camera work and stuff like that so sure. i'm very blessed in that way but i have the tools i i have the money to invest and it's a lot of money to invest into salaries and you know again fifty five thousand dollar cameras three of those like it's just it's a little uh, excessive but guess what wait until we do a video a real estate video that looks like it was directed by guy ritchie with That's you right. on it and it's like you're gonna be like oh my god like this like it'll pump you up and honestly i think the future of 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 real estate is gonna be how much attention you have it really is gonna be the level of influence and attention that you have how many eyes are on you and how many eyes of those eyes respect you because if i have a million dollar house a five hundred thousand dollar house a 22 million dollar house i want the person that has the most amount of eyes on them to be right. throwing that out there and i'm going to be like all right i feel pretty good because that person knows 10,000 people that person has a huge following on social media and those things only happen when you focus on your social media growth and but it's different like the google algorithms change the instagram algorithms right. change like you have to be up with that to see what the retention is you know and i and i love now you've mentioned exp so we'll jump into that i know that that's another big announcement you're now a part of our family as well which yeah. is amazing and that's so wonderful and your vision again here you are coming into exp understanding what our model of is but now you're actually bringing an added benefit walking in the door so you're going to come in and you're going to add your whole production company to yes. what your focus is going to be with what you're going to build here. So tell mm -hmm. me how do you found EXP. Tell me your vision with us. Tell me how you're going to sort of grow this thing, brother. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's it's super exciting. It's the reason I don't sleep and I don't need to sleep. It's because <laughs> I, I, I know I know the future. I know what's going to happen. I know I know what the world is lacking. I know what a lot of real estate companies are lacking. And I see I see a void that I could fill. But the main reason I went with EXP is I've talked to everyone. I have a, because of my shows nat national and will be uh, on HBO Max and more. I I know I know a lot of people are coming at me, giving me the world, saying, "Hey, we're gonna da da da." Just when I talk to Remax and I talk to Keller Williams and I talk to these other people, they didn't really offer anything. No support, no this. They're like, "Get get licensed and that's it." Uh, and that was the end of the conversation. It was just very, I, I didn't like it very much. Yeah. You know what I mean? It didn't seem like they they were gonna support me because everything that you've seen, what I've done. I, I did it with little to no support like That's grace grace was the one that supported me for like the last so many years helping me do sales keeping me organized helping me build the businesses but like look what i've done broke look what i did broke <laughs> so ima imagine if i had the level of support that exp is giving me which is to the highest level ever where it's like now i'm even more pumped i was gonna take a break a vacation after shooting i was shooting for like a year I'm like, yeah. I'm not break, I'm not breaking for anything. I was like, I don't need a vacation. Like the, all the support that EXP has given me, uh, all the mentors that I've had, like, it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's like, it makes it so I could go focus on the, on the bigger picture because I have such a strong support staff and team behind me. So that, that's something I was got, getting from EXP that I never, that I wasn't offered from other uh, agencies. I'm sure in a year they're going to offer me that plus, but guess what? Too late. <laughs> Besides, if you look, if you were to take a vacation, you'd probably start another company about vacations anyway. So, you know, you know, me, like you, you know me pretty well. 
You know, you know me pretty right. well. I think I'm gonna I have to cut it off in like ten businesses because uh, <laughs> it's it's too addicting. It's too especially yeah. when you know how to do business and you're really good with managing yeah. money, and it, and it, and like everyone's problem is the opposite of mine. Sales and bringing work in is the uh, that's my that's not my issue. It's right. if I sell a hundred million, can you guys produce it? It's it's right. not the other way around. Like, hey Rico, this is how you get sales. Like, that's not my that's never been my issue. It's the producing part of it, which is insanely important. So yeah, it is fun to start a business because I'm like, if you guys could just do your job, I'll I'll make us millions. I'll just keep it going. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it'll be easy. So tell me what the greatest lesson you've learned in your career. You've done a lot of things. What's the greatest lesson you've learned? <sighs> oh man, you know. I would say um, no, no. Uh, people have to prove themselves first. I've, I, I spent a lot of money uh, buying into people that were really good at bullshitting me. So I was like, I, I, I believe in you. And I would give them money, money, money. And when they didn't do their job, they would have an excuse and all this kind of stuff. And I think the biggest lesson ever is that I do my thing and then other people have to prove themselves to me. Like, it's like, I can't just, because guess what? If someone takes... $20,000 away from me because I believed in them. It yeah. doesn't hurt me. It hurts the person that's actually supporting me where I could just, I could be like, Oh my gosh, she's supporting me. Let me take care of her. So, but yet I gave it to this person over here. So I think it would be to slow down. Like everyone's kind of a good salesperson. You really have to keep a small circle and, and, and see who really is there for the grind. I think that's probably the biggest lesson I've learned. And, and all of this growth and all of these businesses is like, let's see what the other person could do, then then go all in. Because like, I, I would just, I mean, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, uh, like, like again, uh, these contractors, they're smooth salespeople. They're, yeah, they they're good. You know what I mean? They, they could charm me and I'm, I'm, I'm hard to charm and they could charm me. So I was like, <laughs> but guess what? I mean, that's, that's, that's not how it always works out. So I would say, to slow things down and, and really focus um, on your on the quality of your team, that's just so big. I've lost so much money from trusting the wrong people. Uh, maybe if I could go back in time, you know, people say, oh, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't change anything because my life's so good now. I don't believe in that. If I could go yeah. back in time, there's so I'd many change things. change a shitload of time. <laughs> yeah, there's lessons I don't need to learn, <laughs> sir. Like, I think I could go back in time and, and, and save some some money here and there, but... Right. Um, but that's life. So what are you going to do? But you know what's, what I thought was so beautiful by that statement you just sort of said? It's also the fact that some people had taken advantage of you as well. And I could have helped somebody else that was supporting me. It it's wasn't not because me, they, somebody else. they took it from me. It was that humility of wh who else could I have helped because it took time away from somebody else taking advantage of exactly. what my good nature was. I thought exactly. that was really beautiful the way you put that. So yeah. look, we're entering into this crazy shifting market now. So from your point of view, now you've dealt with so many consumers in so many different areas of our real estate business. What's the best piece of advice you would give a consumer coming into a shifting market like this? Well, it's a great question. You know, with, with shifting markets, like it's, it's very interesting, like the, the inflation side of things, like how, I'm ordering like a coffee and a sandwich. I'm like, how is this forty two dollars and fifty cents? <laughs> like, how? Like, you know, I'm like, that's what? How, what's going? Like, I'm ordering a pizza. I asked for like jalapenos. They took one jalapeno and they cut it up into like forty pieces. I'm like, are these the times now? So I, I could see that there is a shift, but there is a consistency as well. Like, uh, what's the? What are the numbers? Like, if you invest into real estate, uh, some of the like the largest, um. Um, the largest group of people that are millionaires are because they invest into real estate. Correct. So, you know, there's, we always will have a need a place to live, um, you know, and the, and finding the culture and finding the areas that you want to live in. Those are all things to obviously consider. Um, I think things are going to get better for sure. I mean, th when the market shifts, people get weird, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, interest rates are high. What do I do? Um, and, and should I, you know, get, get the house that you, wants and then just re refinance i mean it's it's pretty simple you know what i mean like it's people look at the numbers a lot but in all reality you're going to make a decision make sure that's something that you love make sure that you get an agent that you trust and things will go pretty well but 
it is it is scary for some people too it's like hey what do i do should i wait wait it out it's like well the people that do wait it out are the ones that regret it five years from now so mm. it's like just just don't be that person and and, and and trust the process that's that's really powerful it's just that idea of trusting the process right and and you know i always say look there's always opportunities that happen especially in shifting markets in down markets greatness is created so it's always the idea of not being afraid. You know, you were saying that mm -hmm. it almost it almost sort of paralyzes people with decision, right? Indecision yeah. is the worst decision. Yep. And so it allows you, if you just take that breath, like what you were saying earlier, just take a breath, study it, and jump in. Right? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you yeah. see the most successful people in the world, they're like, oh, I, I love this. This is the best time yeah. for me. I know. Well, wh it's why crazy. do you think that is? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, people are getting excited over what's going to be a down market. By the way, this actually is really good. Markets are supposed to be cyclical. This yeah. is normal. It's yep. normal, right? It's so like so people are getting afraid of things because most people that have entered into the industry in the last four to five years has only seen an overly inflated up market. Mm -hmm. So they're all sort of like, forget about a price reduction. They've never ever had to ask for anything in their life. Mm -hmm. So now it's got to get the skill set to come in. But this is absolutely normal. Yeah, I actually like this. I, I love this because the, the real good agents and the real good contractors will be the ones that survive this. That's uh, right. You know, you go back a year and a half, two years, you know, in Denver, the market just exploded. 200K over asking no inspections, let's let 80 offers on every single house. Like, guess what? Realtors got fat, okay? Realtors got, it, right. was, it, it was too easy. You know what I mean? People were like, I, I'm killing it. I'm like, I could replace you with someone that's never done real estate before, and they would have done 20, 30, 40 million, straight up, that's like right. no offense. So guess yep. what? Now with this market, agents have to work harder. You gotta, you gotta do open houses more often. You gotta start doing social media outreach more consistently like the market's not going to always just come to you and and what happens is like i said when people get fat i'm talking about here I they, know they, they, they get fat here which like oh well i don't have to try as hard people are going to call me no like this is the time where you have to work hard and by the way if you work harder now and people are going to see that when the when the market was hard that you killed the game it, 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 that's what i want to see Go uh, list my $3 million house. List it. List it. I want you to list it because I saw what you were doing when things were slow and harder. Because th this is how it's, this is what's going to make your future bright is the, how you handle this market. Because guess what? When the market goes back up, low interest rates come and everyone else is coming. Everyone's going to go to you versus that person that was just had that one and a half year of just like free, free, free. It was free. It was just That's free it. money that we all made. And uh, that's why I like that, because I, I want those people on my team. Like the ones that are doing things now are the people I want on my team, because then I'll take them from here to there. And then when, it, when the market's good, don't even worry about it. I'll go to sleep. Absolutely. Bingo. That's it. I mean, that's, that's, that's the game plan. That's the lesson. Yeah. Rico, who was the most influential person in your life? Oh, man. Most influential person. You know, uh, I really never, I never really had a very high influential person. Like I, I, I have amazing parents, but you know, they, they weren't entrepreneurs. Yeah. I think honestly, like my influence has always been through, uh, it, it was anger, man. It was anger. <laughs> it's what it's, it, it really was. I never, I never, I never saw a person and was like, I want to be that person. What I saw was flaws. I saw flaws and I saw yeah horrible people that I used to work for. And I was like, I swear I'm going to get to that level and be the opposite of those humans. Like it was, it was mostly, that's what really has motivated me is when, when someone does something for me and I get a big job and it gives me a big paycheck, I take care of them. It's incentivizing yeah. for them to keep sending me more, more work. It's incentivizing them for more. And then I take care of them. It's a good feeling. As I grew and making tens of millions of dollars for people, all they did was take, 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 take. And so I, I, all I could, it's like, I, I go blank. It's like, I, I get enraged with anger because of all the things that are going on. So I think there was never really, like there's people that give beautiful advice, 
Uh, sure. Like Gary V a million years ago, I would listen to Gary V. I don't need to listen to Gary V anymore. I'm motivated. I don't need motivation. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just need people to do their You're job. You're Gary V to somebody else now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if they apply the things just like, you know, Gary V, he said it a billion years ago. If I'm, if, if you're still watching my videos seven years from now, my first videos didn't do shit. And that's so true because it's first videos like do this, 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 and, and people need that motivation. Don't get me wrong, but I, it really is anger, dude. It's, it's, it's anger from people screw me over the last five, six, ten, ten 10 years in all of these industries. And that's, that's my true nature. It's like, be the opposite of those people. Cause again, I'll survive but I've seen these people do it to people that have families. Like, yeah. you know, I, it, I, it's me, myself, and my dog, right? Just like, that we're, we, you know, we could survive, but I've seen these people do it to people that have three kids, you know what yeah. I mean? Single moms that have two kids, like, and she's like really needing that money to survive. And they're just like, whoopsie daisies, bye. I'm like, uh, it's anger. It's, it's seeing that for the last 10 years. That's the main motivator for me, man. That story just made me understand the title of your show. We yes. go to the it, 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 so it, it makes sense now, but I was doing it naturally yeah. before it was a show. So um, oh, I get know. it. Yeah. It's your passion. It's who, it, it's who you are. And that's yeah. awesome. All right. I have a final question for you. So yeah. I love asking this of all my guests. So in your book of life, what is this chapter called and why? Um, I would say my book of life, this chapter would be, um, this one right now, I think everything I've done for the last, as long as I could remember, brought me to this moment here. I think this is the, the, the pivotal shift of my life where, you know, I always felt like I was meant for more and I, I was the only real true believer, maybe between one or two other people, you know, I have a Hispanic mom, she's rough. She's rough. She's like, hey, work nine to five, you know, da da da. Like she's she's super rough. Sure. She wasn't like, you you could do it. Yeah, you could do a show. Like it wasn't like that. So I think this chapter would be like, um, like you like almost like you made it. You know what I mean? Like it's finally oh. like all the things that I sacrificed and done. Now now I never expect that the nation would see it. So I would say uh, this is the catalyst I have that I could create my why. You know what I mean? Like my why would be. Um, you know, saving homeowners, giving contractors homeowners and, and people better value add and, and to do things better. And if I could really make a huge impact like that worldwide, then I'll die happy. So th this, this is the platform that was given to me like all at once. EXP's yeah. platform, HGTV platform, the social media platform I have. Uh, I mean, I have celebrities that are flying to meet me this Thursday. Can't mention who it is. To, to potentially be a business partner with my production company. Amazing. So I'm just like wow. a, a, big, a big star, a big one. Uh, I can't uh, mention who it is. Uh, I, I can tell you we'll later. Do the follow up. Yeah, I can, I can tell you later. But uh, I'm just so, I would say this is the, the chapter would just be called grateful. Like uh, grateful, but don't stop. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I have to keep going. I have to, I, there's still so much more work to do. But uh, this is the, uh, the year that I felt truly appreciated for the sacrifices of before you know what i mean that only few yeah. see but now the world sees it so that that's probably the best feeling i've ever had in my life to be honest that is just amazing rico i gotta tell you something my brother listen you and i just just met recently but i gotta tell you i had such a great connection with you after this conversation now i understand why you have such an amazing spirit your your why is just so big and it's just to help as many people as possible I love that. I love to support that. And I am here for whatever you need. And thank you for who you are. And thank you for this conversation, my brother. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. This is great. So um, Rico Leon, Rico to the Rescue, HGTV, January 7th premiere. What's your uh, website again, Rico? Where do people find you? It's literally my name, Rico Leon, R-I-C-O-L-E-O-N.com. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you all for listening. Hi, this is Michael Valdez reminding you to subscribe to all of these podcast channels and we'll see you in the audience.